Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, this channel is all about how to create print-on-demand designs, including shirts and blankets, mugs, hats, you name it, using things like Canva, Photopea, uh, Creative Fabrica, and then uploading them to sites such as Etsy, Redbubble, Merch by Amazon, Amazon Seller Central, and more. So if you are interested in print on demand, uh, please like and subscribe. We are a growing channel and stick around for some helpful tips and tricks. Uh, so in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to create this right here. This would be a custom um, blanket. So this is a blanket from um, Printful and I used, um, you know, I used Canva to create this layout. Um, and go ahead and upload it onto Printful, create a blanket that you could then, you know, customize. If you'd like to learn how to, um, how to do this, how to create your own custom blankets and sell them, go ahead, stick around. I hope you guys learned something. <laughs> um, and if you haven't, by the way, go ahead, hit like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. So thank you. So right now I am on my Printful page. Now I did have um, somebody asking questions about blankets. <laughs> Oops, so um, about blankets and then just uh, in general, some of the larger print things. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little blanket tutorial for you guys here today. And so the first thing I do like to do just to show you guys is, is show you guys how you can get a template if you're not sure about the size and all of that. And so, so if I come over to product catalog and I just go ahead and find whatever product it is that I want to design for. For this one, it's gonna be in home and living. And they do have some other large print things. There's posters and there's a different kind of prints, flags. I'm gonna go down here to blankets. That's what I'm shooting for here. Now um, we are looking at sort of the all over print blanket. And so that is this one. I have, by the way, bought this one and it is a very nice blanket. It is super soft and the print came out nice. So I do recommend this blanket and it's a good one to uh, sell in your shops. So, for example, like your Etsy shop or on Amazon via Seller Central. Um, the blanket comes in two different sizes and the dimensions are gonna be a little bit different um, each. So you may wanna pick one to design for um, if you're being very specific. Um, if you're doing just a general pattern, it would work for either one. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and as I scroll down, you'll see down here, description, shipping, file guidelines. I can go to file guidelines here and I can just go ahead and download the file guidelines. That'll go up to downloads. It will be in a zip file, so you would have to then go ahead and unzip it and um, you know pick uh, which file you want. So if I was gonna go with like my 60 by 80, I could take that and then just drop it in my downloads. Once I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to Canva to go ahead and design for this. So I'm on my blank Canva page here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, create a design. I'm gonna go with a uh, custom size. Now, depending on whether you want this to be more a vertical design or a horizontal design, or it doesn't matter, we'll you know, obviously change your width and height. I am gonna go with more of a horizontal design. So I'm gonna go with um, more a, it was 5,400 by 4,600 pixels. And we'll try that out. So here is my blank canvas. What I'm gonna do is go over to the left-hand side where it says uploads. And I'm gonna go ahead and upload the template that I just made. So I can go to upload files, find my template. And here I've got a template right here. Um, so this is actually the 50 by 60, but it fits pretty well in this box. So that's about as close as you know you can get here. And so it's just giving you your template um, so that you know you're gonna have some bleed. You want all the important things to stay sort of within the red area if you've got anything super important, but you do want it to go edge to edge. And so that'll kind of show you the general size that we're going with. So again, I chose 5,400 pixels by 4,600 pixels. And I'm gonna show you how you can make sort of a um, customizable family blanket. So if you wanted to sell this as a custom, um, a customizable blanket, that would be a great way to do it. So I'm gonna make it more of a family blanket. You already, 
I already showed you how you can do all over print things using different patterns. And of course you could do that for blankets as well, just different patterned effects. But I'm gonna show you more of a how you would design if you were doing something more custom. So I'm gonna start by selecting a, I'm just gonna get rid of that, selecting a background color. So I'm thinking of a background color more in the tan. Um, again, blankets, you want it to go with their home decor. Tan is a pretty neutral color. Something nice and light for a blanket is gonna look good. So I'm gonna go over to elements. I'm just gonna go ahead and type in, let's go with a tan texture, because I want a little texture to it background. And so I can go ahead and I can do photos and there's lots of different sort of tan textures. So any of those sort of light tan texture looks, something really subtle, you know, might look good as just sort of your background for your blanket. And so it doesn't really matter which one you pick. There's some marbled ones in there too that you could use. This is just gonna be sort of my my backdrop. So I'm actually gonna just go to my recently used and pick the one that I had selected prior. Okay, so here's the one that I had originally picked as just my nice tan background. So it's nice and simple. I'm gonna let it go edge to edge. And so this is just gonna be 100% my tan backdrop. So there it is. That is the tan that's gonna go on my blanket. Now I'm gonna do this design um, as sort of a photo design where if somebody wanted to um, make a custom blanket, they could put photos in it. So I'm gonna use sort of a three photo design with a stripe going through it and some words. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put R for rectangle. I'm just gonna pull up a rectangle. And the rectangle, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go side to side. I'm gonna make it a little bit narrow and I'm gonna center it in the center of my design. Um, so right about there. Now I can make this any color that I want. I think for this, I'm gonna go with sort of a bluish tone, um, sort of that light gray blue sort of thing. Um, so something like that might look kind of nice, maybe lighter, maybe grayer. You know, just sort of play around until you get what you like. So that looks pretty cool. Now I wanna put some photos. So what I'm thinking is I'll do a big photo here and then maybe two little photos here. So to make it easy for you, if you're making this custom, would be to go ahead, put a little rectangle as a frame and then put a re literally a rectangle frame over the top of it. And so I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna hit R again for rectangle. And so for my first photo, I'm gonna make it probably not quite that big. Maybe something like, let's see if I center it here. Something like that. And of course, this is just gonna be my border. I can make it any color I want. For now, I might go ahead and just stick with white because it's easy. And then I'm gonna make two more rectangles. And every time I want a rectangle, I'm just putting R on my keyboard. So just put an R on your keyboard and there's your new rectangle. Next one I'm gonna do is gonna be something like this. You know, I might even make this a little bit smaller here so that I got a little bit more space. Here is my Next rectangle, I wanna leave a little gap there, so something maybe like that. I can hit Control D because I want another rectangle about the same size there. And so, so far, so good. That looks kinda nice. I can, again, I can make these a little bit wider maybe if I want to, so fill in the space a little bit more. And I'll go ahead and make those white too so that I can see them real easy. And maybe I'll even make that one a little bit wider. So it's going about halfway. So that's gonna sort of be my layout. I'm gonna have a text box here, text box here, and text box here. So let's just pull up some text boxes. So here would be like one text box. And let's go ahead and put, I'm just gonna put family. Now this could be a family name. It could be anything. It could just be the word family. So there is one text box. I'm gonna make this sort of a scripty, so I might as well go ahead and just pick a nice scripty font while I'm here. And so I'm looking for something maybe a little bit more formal. You want it to be easy to read. 
I mean, there's a good example of a nice, just sort of formally sort of font. That's a Nexus script. That'll do. I'm just going to go with this one. This is Wildcats regular. This is one that I did get off of Creative Fabrica for free. So just FYI there, but I can go ahead. I'm going to give this a little bit more space. So maybe more, a little bit more rectangular to make it fit better. Here's my nice family and I could always give it a little bit of an angle there if I want to. Once I have my word family, I can go ahead, control D. I'm going to put one here. Boom. And then control D again. Oops. Control D just duplicates it. So I can put one here centered there. Maybe something like that and I can angle this one too. Um, so maybe that one said family, maybe this one says love and I shrink it down a little bit so it fits inside here. Maybe this one again, it doesn't matter for right now. I'm just going to go ahead and go XOXO. So something like that would look okay. And so right now I'm just getting sort of a general layout of a blanket. So that's my general layout. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the left-hand side where it says elements. Okay, so I got some sort of photo frames that you can just drop the photo into and it's got a border around it, which is essentially what I did there was I just kind of put a border and that's what I was shooting for with that. Um, and so that looks pretty cool. I could again try to just do a rectangular one here, or I could do something with this cool um, sort of shape here, which I do kind of like. So part of me is thinking maybe I'll just stick with this shape here, and that looks a little bit cool. And so now you've got sort of your own oops, editable layout for a family uh, blanket. So now let's say somebody gave you pictures of the family, right? So I'm just going to use some stock photos of families just to show you, but oops, not in frame, sorry, in photos, family. So here's just some easy stock photos of families. And I just wanted to kind of show you the way that you could play with this and the way that this might look. And so, you know, they send you some pictures. Let's say they send you some pictures of their family and you're like, okay, I'm going to throw it in here and make it work. So that one's kind of cute there. There are some baby hands pictures there and then maybe we're looking for some pictures with the the kid and the dog there and so oh you know what it's gonna rotate it ah bummer i don't like that i wanted a rectangular one okay you know, you don't have to use these frames by the way i could just take this photo and crop it down to fit Frames are just easy because you can pl plop it in and then that's simple, but no problems. I can always just literally resize the photo to make it fit the way I want it to. So for example, if I wanted it to fit right about there, maybe a smidge bigger, and then I can just use the arrows on my keyboard. The up, down, right, left arrows will move your design one pixel at a time, and so I can literally just move it like that really easy. So there's one more. And then let's say I had one more. I'm going to have to lose that too because it wants to rotate it. And so one more family photo. What do I got? That's cute. That's cute. Okay. That looks, that looks like it might be the same family. And so I can again just crop it down to make it fit where I want it to. So something like that. And again, I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move it one pixel at a time to make sure that it's nice and centered. Um, so that looks pretty cool. Again, you can use the, the frames if you want to you know, create different shapes like that. If you like the way that this looks without the shapes, then of course you don't need to use the shapes. Um, so now that I've got that, I think I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pick a color palette. So maybe I might do, let's go ahead and go white there. 
maybe I want this to match sort of sort of there, something like that, so that it's all sort of matching. I can do sort of kind of keep those white. If I want to, I can either put a border around this. I think I want this to be a border. So you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to just a rectangular one. I know. All of that just to make it extra. <laughs> uh, where'd my baby foot go? There's a baby foot. I know. Let's go ahead and shrink baby feet down. I'm gonna crop the baby feet in to whatever size I want. Again, pull that out. But maybe I do want it to come out a little bit more. Something like that. I'm gonna pull up my rectangle. I'm gonna go ahead and make my rectangle Maybe a peachy color. Let's see. I like the peachy color. Get my rectangle. I'll put it on top and out. And make sure it's centered. And send it to back. I hit control and then the left bracket will send it to back. Now I've got my photo. I'm using the arrows on my keyboard to move the photo just where I want it so that it looks centered something like that. Oops. Cool. Something like that looks kind of nice. Um, I think I want these to be bigger too. So I'm just gonna go ahead, pull the frame out. Cool. And pull that out so that they're matching sizes. And then I'm gonna pull the photo out so that it matches size a little bit better. Oops. So that looks a little bit better. I'm gonna get a little effect here. I'm gonna do a little shadow, uh, maybe something a little darker. Sometimes I like to try to pull colors. Uh, oh, well that actually might look good there. No, I need a darker. Let's go with black or how about a really dark. grayish somewhere there no transparency very little offset just enough to make it kind of look like it's popping a little bit that looks cool I can do the same thing here effects shadow I'm just gonna go ahead and do that sort of same really dark color hopefully that's it no transparency lose my offset so it's really small. That's just gonna make that pop. I could do the same thing here if I wanted to. Oops, sorry, the dogs are going a little crazy. But anyways, obviously you could keep playing with this. There's all sorts of ways you could play with this, but this would be an example of a customizable blanket that you can now put. So you could take this, make a mock-up of it, stick it on your Etsy shop, and put it as customizable and allow people to select what words they want in here, allow them to send you photos that you could then put in here and that's how you could create a nice family blanket. So if they sent you three photos, you put the three photos in here, you go ahead and put whatever words they want, if they want the words to be changed, if they want a year, for example, you could put the year here, if they want like the family name here, you could do that. So all different ways that you could go ahead and customize this. Um, and so that is essentially how you would design a blanket if you wanted to make a customizable blanket like this. Um, so the other thing I was going to show you is now we're going to go ahead, I'm going to show you the mock-up of it and how to upload it and how to make it fit right. So I'm just going to call this family blanket, helps if I spell it right, family blanket mock-up. Family blanket mock-up. So here is my family blanket mock-up. So I'm gonna download this, and this is where it's gonna be different, so pay attention. You'll go to download. If you download it the way it is, 
it's going to be too small to put on a big uh, blanket. And so that's an issue that I think a lot of people are running into is that it's not big enough and the quality isn't good. So to fix that, there's something here, it says size. And right now it's just at a one, which is the 40 or 5,400 by 4,600 pixels. But I can now download it in a larger size. So let's say I take that one, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a two. So now it is a lot bigger. So now it says that the pixels are uh, 10,000 by like 9,000. So it's a lot bigger. Now it'll let you know that increasing the image size means that it may take longer to download and that's okay. It's a larger file, but now it is going to print on large things very well. So if you're having difficulty um, designing and having it be big enough to print on a blanket or to print on a poster or a print or something large, that is how you increase the size. You just have to go here, increase the size right there. So literally by going from one to two, we've doubled the size. I can now download it. It's gonna be a lot bigger and it might take a little bit longer to download, usually not too much. And then we're gonna go ahead and go right back over to Printful and I'm gonna show you how I would upload this onto a blanket on Printful. Okay, so now that's downloaded, I'm gonna go over here. So I'm back on my Printful. We're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna do um, product template. So I'm gonna hit product template here. I've done this a few times. Um, and so I'm gonna cut create template. I'm gonna go to my home and living. I'm gonna select my blanket, select my all over print blanket. Now this was a horizontal design and there's two different sizes. Um, and so again, you can pick whichever size you want. You could pick both of them. You could pick only one of them. I'm gonna upload my new file, which is going to be my new family blanket mockup. There we go. So once it's downloaded, I can hit apply. That did take quite a bit longer to download than most of your other ones, again, because it's a very big, thing. So now you can see it's not quite fitting this blanket right. And that's because this is the 60 by 80 and I did design for the 50 by 60. So if I click over to the 50 by 60, now it fits, you know, pretty darn good. I can extend it out, I think just a tiny bit to make sure it's edge to edge. So it should go all the way past the edge. And so that's pretty good right there. Now you will see some of the corners are kind of coming out of the the sort of safe area, but all of the main things are inside. Family, I probably should have moved down a little bit so I can see everything looks pretty good, but family's a little high. So you may decide, okay, well, I'm gonna go back over to my blanket and I'll just sort of fix that a little bit. And that wouldn't be too hard to fix. I can shrink family down a little bit. And so that I can do and make that a little bit easier. Um, and so any kind of issues that you find, you can just kind of go back and forth and fix. Um, so if I wanted to maybe crop these photos in a little bit more inside, I can do it that way too. So I can come back up here, say, okay, tell you what, I'm gonna crop this down a little bit more and I'm gonna crop this down a little bit more. So one thing to remember um, when you're doing this, when you're designing it initially, is that you are, if you're doing this as a custom design, you're making a template. And so when we make the template, it's worth spending a lot of time to make sure that you get your template right, to make sure that you get all the sizing and the colors and everything the way that you want them. That way in the future, you can recreate this as many times as you want um, quickly and easily. So you do wanna spend the time to get your template right. So if you upload it, so I've uploaded it, and so now what I see is, oh, maybe this is a little bit closer to the edge than I would like it just because I don't want that word to get, you know, cut off or, or blurred at all. Maybe this photo, maybe I just wanna bring the edges in a little bit. Maybe I decided that this isn't quite popping as much as, much as I'd hoped it would. It's always cool to be able to go back and forth and back and forth. So whenever I'm doing this, I always leave all my tabs open so I can just jump back over to Canva, make any changes that I want, and then jump right back over to Printful and you know see again how it looks. And so that's what I've done. I jumped back over to Canva for a minute and I made some alterations. I changed a little bit of the font just to make it uh, fit a little bit better, move the photos a little bit closer, things like that, just to make it a little bit cleaner. So I'm gonna go ahead and try again. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna get rid of this one. So I've decided I'm gonna go 
with my new version. Try again. So now I'm just going to go ahead and upload my new version. And you can take as many attempts as you need to get it right. Once you know that you've got it right, then you're set. So then when somebody wants something, it becomes very easy to just sort of pop their photos in or pop in the words or whatever you need once you've got your template. So always make sure that your template is perfect. It's exactly the way you want it. And then you can kind of go from there. Okay, so take two, I've just downloaded my, um, my second attempt here. And so now this is looking a lot better. My words are within my borders. My photos are within my borders. Um, everything's popping a little bit more. I added an extra border there just to make sure that, that that stripe really popped. And so now that looks really good. It's filling my page and so I can go ahead and use this on a blanket right now. Again, this is good quality and it's on a 50 by 60. Um, so this works great. Now you may need to do two sizes of this if you wanted to then put it on the larger blanket. See, because now if I go ahead and I was to look at the larger blanket, it's still good quality, except that, oh man, now it's not really going edge to edge. Now you might be able to get away depending on how big your borders are with going edge to edge that way. And so I've got a little bit sticking out over the tops and the bottoms, but actually that might still work. So I'm not super concerned about just itty bitty little bits here and there. So I think I can get away with this too. It's still good quality. So these are still ready to go. So I can just go ahead and hit continue. Now this is going to be my, uh, I'm gonna call it a family test throw blanket, doesn't matter what I call it, and I can save my product template. And so here's my product template. Now what I can do is get some um, mock-ups here. So I can go ahead and hit these three little buttons here and go to where it says download mock-ups. And I can go with a basic mock-up. Now, unfortunately, you won't be able to see it until after you download it. And so you're gonna have to kind of select a mock-up and go from there. So. Because this is a blanket where I want everybody to see the whole thing, I would go with a flat mock-up. You don't want a folded one because then they won't be able to see what's on it. Folded ones are good if you're just doing a repeating pattern, then the folded ones or the rolled ones might look okay. But if you're doing more of a custom design the way I did, you're gonna want one of the flat mock-ups. So I can go ahead and just go with the flat two mock-up and that's gonna work the best. You can pick whichever size you want. Mine's kind of optimized for the 50 by 60, so that's what I'm gonna go with. And so now I can just go ahead and put generate mockups. It'll take a second. Once the mockup is generated, then I'll hit download mockup. Then I'll go back over to Canva just to show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so now I hit download mockups. And there you go, my mockup is downloaded. So now I can go right back over to Canva. And so now I can go over to my uploads. I'm gonna upload my mock-up for you. There we go, I'm gonna add a page. I'm gonna throw my mock-up on my new page so you guys can see it. And so there is my mock-up. Ta-da. And so that would make for a good mock-up of your blanket and it's gonna show exactly the way that the blanket is going to print. And so again, I've done this. It was pretty good quality. I did something like this, you know, pretty, pretty similar to this actually for my own family, for my mom, for like Mother's Day. Um, so it's great for Mother's Day or, you know, mom's birthday or something like that. Or for grandma, you know, if you want to throw pictures in here, you could do it for the dog too. put the dog's photos in here. So lots of different ways that you could do this as sort of a custom, a really cool custom thing that you can sell. And so I do really like the way that that turned out. It will print well, it looks good from a distance. And so that's one way to make an original blanket. Now again, you can do the all over print pattern stuff. There's nothing that would stop you from just putting sort of like a marbled pattern on it or putting a butterfly print or putting anything like that. Those are kind of generic and it may have difficulty selling because there's a whole bunch of just generic patterned blankets out there. So if you want your blanket to sell, it really has to be something more niche down or more specific because if you just put butterfly blanket, there's gonna be you know a ton or you just kind of put different like tan blanket or whatnot. You, you really need to have um, 
something to get that blanket to sell. So customizable stuff is really good, especially when the holidays come because they make great gifts and most of the time people are buying these as gifts for somebody else. So customizable stuff is always really good. It could be a graduation blanket with graduation photos, for example. It could be a Christmas blanket with you know Christmas family photos. So that is just one way that you can make these sort of customizable blankets and it is ready to go. So right now my Printful shop is integrated with Etsy and it's integrated with Amazon Seller Central. So I could, you know, if I wanted to, at least through Etsy, list this as a custom blanket. And um, then when somebody comes and they want me to customize it, I just go back up to my original template, pop their photos in, right? Download it, go back over to Printful and then I just, you can just change the order. So if you edit the order and then you edit the, the, the photo or the image and you put their image in and that's how you would do it. So they would go ahead and buy this blanket, tell you what edits they want you to make. You would then make the edits and then just change out the, the photo that you're, you're printing um, for the blanket. And so you could definitely do custom things that way through Etsy. I do a lot of, of custom work that way and so Sorry, it was a little bit of a long video, a little bit in depth. If you have questions about it, drop it in the comments section below. I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. I hope you guys are being as you know creative as, as you can be and coming up with some really cool stuff and branching out. Um, obviously, t-shirts are gonna be the, probably the number one seller, but go ahead and branch out to as many different products as you can, as many platforms as you can, as many design styles as you can. It is a numbers game, so remember, if you're not making a ton of sales, you know, get a lot of numbers out there because the more you have, the more your chances of a sale, the more sales you're gonna make. So once you start to get thousands of designs up, um, your odds are gonna go way, way higher that you're gonna make more sales. Um, so that was it. Again, if you have questions, drop it in the comment section below, and I hope to see you guys again next week. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative, and we'll see you next time.